Every day, more pictures are emerging from the Philippines' disaster zone, and each time revealing more about the sheer power of Typhoon Haiyan. This is Marabout in Samar. It's 20 kilometers of coastline ripped to shreds as its residents wander around its shattered remains. 15,000 people live here. Usually, it's a place popular with tourists. <laughs> The official death toll now stands at more than 2,300, but that's not counting many areas that haven't been heard from. The government says at least 80,000 homes have been destroyed, leaving more than 580,000 people homeless. Tons of aid supplies are now arriving at airports in the worst affected areas from countries and organizations around the world. Relief operations are finally picking up pace. Now two more airports in the region have opened. Amongst the items, water and sanitation equipment, medical supplies, shelter and food. But despite all this aid now coming in, only a small amount is getting to the people who desperately need it. A lack of trucks and blocked roads is hampering efforts, so citizens like these do what they can. Now the most senior U.S. military commander says the USS George Washington has arrived in the Philippines, all part of the aid effort that's being stepped up to an unprecedented level. Reports of looting and fighting increase fear and panic among survivors on the seventh day after Typhoon Haiyan struck the Philippines. With rumors of escaped prisoners and armed rebels, police have begun patrolling the streets. Troops have been deployed in a bid to maintain law and order. But frustration has boiled over into anger as essential supplies fail to reach those in need. At Tacloban Airport, there are not enough flights to cope with the exodus from the stricken city. Special forces often have to hold back the hundreds of people, many of whom have had to walk for hours to reach the airport with little or no food. None of the aid being loaded on the runway is being distributed to the needy crowds nearby.